Well, hey, everybody. How was lunch? I hope you all had a good lunch. And you finished the whole thing. And you got to have your cookie. So, I've never done a live meet before. And I'm kind of freaking out a little bit. But, uh, here we are. So, I, um... I kind of got started a little early on this thing. The uh, paper I'm using right now, I don't, I don't love this. It's made by the same company that makes the other paper that I normally use. It's the exact same brand, but this is like a, a watercolor block. And the other one is just like a big loose uh, pad of paper. And for some reason, this one behaves way differently than the other one. I, you know, just the way it carries the water is kind of weird and everything dries really light. You got to work a lot harder on this. And I was going to not use this paper. I thought, okay, you know what? I, I might as well not let it go to waste. So I got started a little bit ago just to kind of make sure everything was going okay <laughs> before I got on here and went live. But anyway, so I'm doing another ink wash here. And today... I am doing a portrait of Miss Judy Garland. We all know Judy Garland, of course, from The Wizard of Oz, but she had a gigantic career. She married, um, and she made, she made something like 34, 35 films or something over the course of her career. And of course, she did television and Broadway and all that. Um, very talented performer. So Judy Garland was born Francis Ethel Gum. Judy Garland was a, a stage name, and it was wisely suggested to her early in her career that she take on something a little bit more glamorous. And she got her start on vaudeville, um, doing an act with her two sisters. I don't know if she had any more siblings than that, but I know it was, it was her and her two sisters. Um, and um, you know, vaudeville was just kind of on the wane as, as Hollywood and motion pictures were on the rise. So as a kid, she went down to MGM and did an audition and they signed her right away. She was signed to MGM in 1935. Um, she was born in 1922, which kind of freaks me out a little bit. That's 100 years ago. And you know, growing up with The Wizard of Oz and all that, it's hard to think like she was born 100 years ago. Well, the Wizard of Oz came out before my parents were born. So, yeah, I guess it makes sense. So she was born in 1922. She died in 1969. So, uh, born and died before my lifetime. Um, she was only 47 when she died. So, like Elvis, another uh, early tragic death. Um, drugs involved in that. And... Uh, you know, fame and fortune is not what people think it is. It's not great. Um, when I was younger, I, I really wanted to get into acting. I was into theater and all that. And um, I really wanted to go to Hollywood. I really wanted to be an actress. And I'm thankful that that didn't really pan out for me. I didn't really try. But, um, you know, it was one of those things, drawing and painting just sort of got me right away. And, you know, the acting was kind of an aside. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that didn't pan out because what they do to young people in Hollywood, you know, the, the girls in particular, it's, it's, it's pretty terrible. So, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot to be thankful for in avoiding that. You know, the, the money and the fame I don't really think is, is worth what happens to you. But anyway, um, she, um, Judy Garland was 17 when, um, they shot The Wizard of Oz. It was filmed in 1930. It was released in 1939. And I, for some reason, I always thought she was younger, um, when, uh, when she made Wizard of Oz. I thought she was maybe about 14 or 15. She was 17. And, um, you know, they needed her to look like a little girl. And she was really little. She was like 4'11". She was really, really tiny. So, it, you know, at 17, she, you know, was probably, you know, just about cracking 4'11", if even that. But uh, supposedly that costume that she was wearing, that blue gingham dress, was because, you know, the skirt was big and flouncy and the pattern was, you know, kind of chaotic and confusing. It sort of blurred her body a little bit. So it, it, it you know, you couldn't really tell that she was 
pretty much a grown woman playing a, t a 12 year old. Um, so um, that kind of sort of locked her into celebrity was, was that movie. Cause that was, that was a huge uh, deal at the time when that came out, you know, Technicolor film was still fairly new. Um, it was still kind of a marvel to, to have a color film. And yeah, you know, I, I, I haven't seen Wizard of Oz in a really long time. It's been years, but you know, it's, it starts off filmed in um, black and white, almost a sepia tone. And um, you know, the house gets, picked up in the tornado and she goes flying and she lands in Oz and opens the door and you just see this color wonderland. And this is something that was still pretty new um, to uh, film audiences at the time. So at, at, at the time, I can only imagine what it had to be like sitting in the theater and to see those doors open and all that color and that yellow brick road. I mean, people just had to be blown out of their seats when they saw that. Um, I think if I remember right, I, th I think that was the same year if I'm not mistaken, that was the same year as Gone with the Wind. And um, Gone with the Wind, I'm pretty sure, I, I think took Best Picture that year, which, um, true confessions, I've actually never seen Gone with the Wind, and I probably should, you know, for somebody who likes old Hollywood as much as I do. Um, I've actually never seen it, but it's, you know, it's on the list. The list of movies that I have not seen is really <laughs> surprising. Um, it's kind of funny when I think about some of the movies that I have not seen because they're movies that everybody's seen by accident at least once. But anyway, um, so I, I, I picked up on the painting here when I, when I started on the face, cause that, that's all anybody's here to see anyway. You know, nobody cares about painting the dress, but, um, so she died pretty young and had a pretty rough life in uh in the interim um young stars in hollywood at the time yeah i mean i suppose at the time now but young hollywood stars at the time um had these horrible horrible schedules child labor laws weren't really what they are today so they would have these young kids and they'd be on the set for you know 12 14 16 hours at a time and they'd get tired and you know they'd give them a little something to perk them up and help them perform and then they couldn't sleep so they give them a little something to take the edge off so they could relax and then the next day they do the same thing so um the way i understand it pretty much by the time uh, wizard of oz came out in the theater she was already really full-blown um substance abuser at that time because she was just so hooked on that stuff just to get through the day of shooting and filming and, and whatnot. And that's not something you just leave on the set when you're done with it. That's not something you just go home for the weekend. You know, you start, you start feeling it when you just suddenly stop doing those things. So it, it became a lifelong habit and it's eventually what killed her. Um, the uh, studio at the time had a lot of the big femme fatale, you know, smoke and screen sirens, um, on their roster and Judy always kind of got sort of, you know, pegged as, as, you know, kind of kid sister and the, you know, the girl next door, you know, kind of wholesome and all that, which is understandable. Um, when you put her next to some of the studios, other stars at the time, you know, um, Lana Turner was, was getting really big just as, as Judy was kind of getting out of, um, Wizard of Oz. They had Hedy Lamar, of course, who is just, knocks your socks off just to look at her. Um, but, you know, how many people on the street, if you ask them, are, are going to recognize either one of those names? At this point, it's just pretty much, you know, geeks who like old Hollywood. Um, but everybody knows who Judy Garland and is. If they don't recognize the name, you just say, oh, Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, they know exactly who you're talking about. So um, as she was, was growing up, they kind of wanted to get her out there and, you know, get her... Uh, doing female leads and stuff, but she never really quite made it into that whole category of the smoking hot screen sirens. And I always thought she was very pretty. I think she was a very pretty girl, even when she was very young. Um, but you know, the, the studios, they had, um, they put caps on her teeth cause they, they didn't think her teeth were very nice. And they had um, like these little devices that you could put, 
up in your nostrils that would kind of like pinch your nose up and reshape your nose. And they thought her nose was too wide. And um, she'd had a makeup artist working with her. I don't remember what film it was, but she had said, you know, Judy, you don't need to do that. You're very pretty. And so she stopped wearing the stuff. And at that, by that time, she had enough star power that she could kind of tell the studio she wasn't going along with certain things and they would let her. Um, in 19... 40, um, the, the Academy, I'm trying to remember when the first Academy Awards was, I want to say it was like 1933 or something. It was really early. Um, so the, it was, it was up there by the time Wizard of Oz had come out, but, um, she, Judy was nominated, uh, two times in her career for an Academy Award. One was for, um, Judgment at Nuremberg in 1962, which is really heavy. And of course, *The Star Is Born* in 1955. That's that. That's kind of the other one, you know, the the Judy Garland movie that most people would associate her with, and you know, *The Wizard of Oz*. But right after that, absolutely, would be *A Star Is Born*. Um, and she was nominated twice for an Oscar. Didn't win either time, but in 1940, um, she was given, you know, a special category Oscar. They called it, you know, the the juvenile Oscar. So they were giving these things out to kids, but you know, I give. I guess, and you know, she was 18 by then, 18, 19. So she wasn't really a kid anymore, but um, she was always kind of doing those sort of, uh, you know, kind of kid sister roles, her uh, movies that she did with Mickey Rooney, you know, they were kind of the all American kids and, you know, wholesome and singing and dancing and all that. Um, so 1941, I want to say is when Zigfield girl, can't, yeah, it was 1941 when Zigfield Girl came out. If you've never seen that, if you like old Hollywood and you've never seen Zigfield Girl, like go see that immediately. It's really, really just a beautiful movie. Um, it's uh, kind of triple billing. It's Judy Garland, Hedy Lamarr, who I, I mentioned before, and Lana Turner. They were they were both kind of the 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 big the big girls on on campus at MGM at the time. And um, Judy was kind of doing more um, like a supportive role at the time. You know, the, everybody wanted to see um, Hetty and Lana because they were just the, the glamour girls. And it, um, Judy had been quoted as sort of joking and partially complaining that on the set, you know, the they'd all show up and, you know, Lana Turner would walk in and everybody would, oh, hello, Lana. And, Hedy Lamar would walk in and they go, oh, Miss Lamar. And Judy would show up and they'd be like, oh, hey, Judy, how's it going? <laughs> so, uh, you know, she was, she was always kind of the, you know, the little sister to, you know, these glamour girls. But um, Lana Turner had said to her as, as they were filming this movie, had, had said to Judy, she said, I would gladly, I'm paraphrasing here, but she said, I would gladly give all of my beauty to have half of your talent which 100%, you know, Lana, Lana Turner was a good actress and she was very pretty, but, you know, as far as just pure talent and pure presence and ability and all that, I mean, Judy Garland really smoked them all, I think. And um, a lot of the, a lot of like the, you know, the big starlets at the time, a lot of, if, if you, if you go back and you watch them, a lot of them, the, the acting's not that great. They're kind of hammy and they're kind of corny and it's over the top and they're just kind of there because they're pretty and, you know, whatever. Unpopular opinion. You know, I, I get a lot of hate when I say stuff like that. But, you know, it's like even in the later years, you know, uh, Marilyn Monroe was not a great actress. She was just good looking. You know, let's, let's be real honest here. But um, Judy was really, really talented. You know, she could sing. She could dance. She could act. Um for being as little as she was, she just had this massive, massive stage presence. And um, Zigfield Girl was kind of where she really took off with that, you know, as, as, you know, not the child star, but, you know, capable of carrying a scene. You know, she has this big tropical number that they do. And that was kind of like her, her real big breakout where she's like, all right, I'm a big girl now. No more Dorothy, no more cute kid shit. Um, but she was already in a lot of trouble at that point, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, the studios would always have her on these really strict diets and um, 
she smoked a lot. She drank a lot. Um, she lived really, really hard. And I get it. That's, um, this is kind of a crappy life, you know, to, to be born into my God, you know, think about, you know, your adolescence and all that. I had a really hideous, really awkward adolescence. I cannot even imagine doing it on camera, you know, in front of millions of people, everybody watching me and everybody commenting on your figure and how you look and how much you weigh and all that. I mean, that had to be horrendous. You know, that, that takes a real toll on you. And she, she was kind of a trooper to put up with it, but you know, that's, that's what you did at the time. You know, what else, what else are you going to be doing? That's, there was no internet. There was no going your own way. TV wasn't even really a thing, you know, and, and, you know, vaudeville had kind of died out. Theater was sort of taking a hit on account of everybody wanting to go see the movies because the movies were still relatively new. So you did, for the most part, you, you know, you did whatever the, the studio wanted you to do. And if you wanted to work, you kept your weight down and you kept your figure and you, you know, you wore what they told you to wear and you ate what they told you to eat. But, you know, she told stories of, you know, going to eat and ordering food and they would come back with a bowl of soup for her. And I thought, God, you know, that's what a bunch of assholes, you know, I, again, you know, the whole Hollywood thing and it, not much has changed. I, I just think people are more willing to talk about it now. Um, but and just uh, that's an awful system. I, I don't I, I think part of my attraction to old Hollywood, the way I have it and some of these big stars and all that, you know, we, we all kind of gush about oh everything was so nice back then and everybody was so beautiful and the clothes were so beautiful and the hair was so beautiful they were but everything was really kind of shitty you know everything was not okay and nobody was nobody was having a great time and people had these terrible lives you know you know you look at hollywood now and you think oh everybody's so trashy and everybody's so gross and oh, everything sucks and it's like it's not that much different you know it's it's still pretty much the same um as what everybody was doing back then. It's just, you know, they had really, really nice outfits and that's about it. Um, so about what I'm working with here, this is um, black and white ink wash on paper and fruit flies. Um, black and white ink wash on paper, which um, is really similar to watercolor, only it's obviously it's black and white. Um, this is kind of tricky though, and it's not, it's way faster than oils. That is for sure. Um, it's way faster than oils. And I like that you can clean up in about 30 seconds. That's kind of one thing that I just greatly dislike about oils is you're down for the day. If you start an oil painting, you're going to be cleaning up a mess for the rest of the night. Um, but the, um, the workflow in this is pretty similar to tattooing. So it wasn't really a whole lot of a stretch for me to pick this up. And I've, I've been working like this for a while, but I, I put it down. Um, you know, unfortunately, I kind of go in, in phases with what I'm doing. And sometimes I'm working a lot. I'm really into it. And sometimes I'm just, you know, completely letting things slide. And I don't want to paint. And I'm too tired. And I'm too burned out. Blah, 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 blah. But um, I want to pick it back up again. You know, it's not a uh, a skill I want to abandon or lose. Um, but I, I, I want to kind of mix this up a little bit with the oils. So I thought a good idea would be alternating, um, you know, do an ink wash, do an oil, do an ink wash, do an oil, just to kind of keep, keep all the muscles sharp, keep everything working. But um, the um it is really hard to do this and talk to people at the same time i do not like to have an audience when i'm doing anything i can tell you what um i'm painting or drawing or anything i cannot stand anybody looking over my shoulder or talking to me so i'm all like oh yeah i'll do a live painting well that's a dumbass idea um but you know tis the uh tis the the times we're living in and i thought you know no uh should probably quit being so shy about it. So um, these go relatively quickly. 
except for again like i said the, the type of paper i'm using for this one i always got to fight with this stuff a little bit harder um but these are, are fairly easy to do um they take a few hours but it's just it's kind of terrifying because it's sort of one shot one kill you know there's no eraser um you can't paint over it unlike oils you can't go back yeah i'll just go back in tomorrow and lighten that up or smooth that out like no no once you once you're once you're done you're done um you know there's a, a terrifying finality to anything that you're doing so uh, i kind of like the challenge i guess but um anyway that's enough about me back to judy so um she was married five times so um i honestly don't know which one of them was first i don't remember which one of them was last but she was married at the time of her death and she died in london if i remember it. she died like in a london hotel um nobody there with her except for her husband at the time and i think they'd only been married for a couple months like they were just pretty freshly married when she died um she had three children actress lorna luft and she had a son joey and there's uh, nobody really knows that much about him there's not really a whole lot out there on joey and of course liza minnelli her most famous offspring um kind of went down the same road her mom did too you know liza's had a lot of trouble but again you know you you grow up in that hollywood thing it, it kind of screws you up even if you're just sort of there by proxy or if you're the offspring or you know there's uh, there's not a lot about hollywood i think that's very good for people but um there's a uh, you know, it does something to your spirit, but you know, the, again, that's, we have this glamorous idea of old Hollywood and it's like, you know, it was, it was kind of a crappy place. You know, nobody really came out of that system, very happy, very healthy. And I don't think to this day, anybody does. Um, Mickey Rooney was not one of her husbands sort of mistakenly believing that they were an item. And I'm pretty sure unless they really, really, really kept it super, super secret. I don't think they were. And I, I always got the idea that um, Judy was very, very professional. So, um, you know, Vicente Minnelli obviously was um, a workplace romance. Um, but, it, you know, for the most part, I, I, I think she was kind of able to sort of keep that under wraps when she was younger. I think when she got older, she was like, you know what, whatever. I just, I'm, I'm going to do what I want. Um, but yeah, she she and Mickey Rooney were were not an item as far as I'm aware of. Um, but when she died, um, you know, they uh, it was the usual suspects. It was barbiturates and alcohol and all that. And she was only forty seven. Um, terrible death way too early um she had aged very poorly she was a heavy smoker um you know it, it just it didn't do her very well it, she had a really successful career but you know personally she had a very dark and very sad and very short life and you know there's a weirdness to that the way we sort of um Kind of idolize celebrities like this and then everybody's just kind of standing around transfixed gawking at them as they wither and die in front of us and that that's something that i've always been interested in the, the kind of psychology of that of why do we find these people um worship these people and yet just sort of just watch them kill themselves in in order to better serve us you know in order to better serve the people serve the audience serve the studio um you know fame is is a weird monster and a lot of people i think who reach these sorts of of levels of fame to where you know they they really are they've become immortal you know i mean judy garland you know she was born 100 years ago you know she kind of never really died but um this 
this sort of idea that we just kind of want to stand around and watch them kill themselves and then spend the whole rest of our lives lamenting about the tragedy. It's kind of weird. You know, it just sort of makes me wonder, like, didn't anybody want to help her, you know, or, or did nobody give a shit or, you know, when you're at that level, I think you're in a sort of a dangerous place when you get to those sorts of levels of celebrity and wealth and all that is that now you're just surrounded by a bunch of bloodsuckers who are never going to say no to you and are going to just, you know, go along with whatever you're doing and not rock the boat because a lot of people just want to, you know, hitch a wagon onto your star and they want to get into the good parties and they want money. You know, they're, they're trying to get something out of you. And I think that's such a terrifying and vulnerable place to be, you know, and I think that's why a lot of these celebrities and stuff, they get married so damn many times. It's like, they're just trying to, you know, feel protected. Um, they have like, you know, some kind of sense of sanctuary at home. Like there's somebody here who gives a shit about me personally. You know, there's somebody here who cares about, you know, the little kid who, you know, had to grow up in front of cameras and who has to be on all the time and and you know everybody expects something i i can just go home and be me and, and unfortunately they never get that either um hetty lamar who you know i'd mentioned uh was in zigfield girl with um judy had done the same thing she was married like five or six times and was just desperate to find true love and she was so beautiful you know she just was like I, you know i don't think these people even care who i am or what i'm like they just want to look at me and you know have that uh you know the bragging rights of oh that's my wife you know and, I, and it was terrible for her too it was really sad you know hedy lamar actually lived to be pretty old but she she had a terrible life too um it's uh it, it wasn't good for any of these people but um you know, boy, is this depressing. <laughs> you know, you can just leave it to me to just absolutely make anything really depressing. People do. I, I, I really appreciate real, real talent. And Judy Garland was absolutely an incredible talent. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad the world got to know her, but I'm, I'm sorry that they, they did what they did to her. Um, I guess maybe that's why I, I like to do these things. I, I was on a real roll for a while where I was... Um, doing a lot of paintings like this, a lot of, you know, old Hollywood portraits. And then I, I guess in a way it's just sort of my way of thanking them, I guess, but it's also kind of a, a sad sort of tribute, you know, kind of a funeral portrait to the people that we loved and we oohed and odd over them while they were completely suffering. You know, everything was so beautiful on the outside and completely falling apart on the inside, you know, and just this, internal emotional decay you can really appreciate that struggle um you know they were they were all looking for something and they just realized they never found it they all sort of got to the the bottom of the bottle the bottom of the money bag the bottom of the contract and just found absolutely nothing in it so anyway i'm sorry if anybody's asking me anything or saying anything i can't uh Got the thing over my head, so I can't can't see if anybody's saying anything. But if anybody's got any questions or anything, feel feel free to DM me. I'll I'll answer you. Um. But anyway, so this is kind of how it goes with the ink washes. You know, it's a little slow, and things look a little oddball as you're doing it but you know you're you're just kind of pushing around ink and, and water i guess basically i don't know how else to best describe it if somebody was to ask me to show them how to do this i'd be like you know what i really don't know i'm just gonna I'm just gonna go and just i don't know and just look and you tell me what you think but um i do like doing these they're they're pretty easy it's pretty fun um well, that's that. Anyway, these things take probably, uh, these things usually take me about like three, four hours or so to do. So I, you know, ain't nobody got time for that. You guys all got to get to work and drive and do stuff. So I'm certainly not going to sit here and paint for you all day. But anyway, thanks for 
stopping by and thanks for watching. And like I said, if you got any questions, feel free to shoot me a DM and I think I might put this on the UB2B later. All infos below and all that. So that's it. Thanks everybody. Have a great day.